is Ashton and Jordan from Show Me Vegas. So if you've watched our channel for long, you know we're big fans of MGM Resorts. In fact, about a year and a half ago, we made a video ranking the MGM Resorts, in our opinion, from worst all the way up to first. That video is not very good. As a matter of fact, when we go back and look at it now, it's a little bit cringeworthy to us. Now since that time, we've had several more experiences with MGM properties. Some good. Some not so good and some that were just okay. But in any case, opinions change and properties change. In fact, MGM Resorts has added a property and dropped a property since we last made that video. So we thought now was the perfect time to do an MGM Resorts re-ranking. Now, full disclosure before we actually get to the countdown of the MGM properties, this is just completely our opinion. Your opinion on the properties may completely differ. Just honestly based on what you're looking for in a Vegas hotel. And hey, if you don't agree, don't shoot the messenger. Just leave a comment down below and tell us what your opinion is on the best MGM properties. So without further ado, our rankings of MGM properties in Las Vegas in 2023. Coming in at number 9 is Excalibur Hotel and Casino. Alright, it's probably not surprising to you to find Excalibur at the very end of this list. After all, it is known by some as the Dirty Castle. Excalibur is MGM's true budget hotel on the Strip, and it definitely looks that way when you see the rooms. We did a room tour a couple of years ago. You can check out that video here. Okay, the room you're going to get at Excalibur is going to be about like a Motel 6 room. It will be as basic a hotel room as you're going to find anywhere on the Strip. If you're actually just looking for a place to lay your head and take a shower once a day, you might be okay with it. But otherwise, you're probably going to be pretty disappointed. The dining here is what you would expect from a budget hotel. It's mostly sports bars and low-end food. There is a food court and there is a buffet, but it's only open for breakfast and lunch. Now that sounds like a lot of negatives, so let's talk about the positive. Excalibur is a fairly family-friendly hotel. There's a great arcade down in the basement as well as Tournament of Kings. The location, if you like the South Strip, really isn't bad at all. It's right on the corner of Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard. Easy walking to its neighboring properties. But other than that, Excalibur is the last hotel in the MGM portfolio we would ever choose to stay. And that's why it checks in on our list at number 9. Coming in at number 8 is Luxor Hotel and Casino. Okay, just because it comes in at number 8 on this list doesn't mean you need to avoid Luxor. Now a lot of people will say they'd never stay at Luxor, and up until about a year ago we would have been some of those people. But I stayed at Luxor in April of 2022 on a solo trip, and I've got to say, my stay wasn't bad at all. If you want to see more about that stay, I did make a YouTube video about it. You can find it here. The link is in the description. I had a Pyramid King room that was very quiet, recently remodeled, and very clean. A lot of people don't like the casino at this property because they feel like it's a dungeon, but I didn't mind it when I was actually staying there. The slot selection is good, the table minimums are very reasonable. The restaurant lineup at this hotel is not great, but it's not terrible either. There is tender if you're looking for a nice steakhouse, but other than that they're mostly casual options like Diablo's and Public House. And there's quite a bit of entertainment at Luxor as well. The pool at Luxor I think is a bit underrated. It's really pretty nice. It's an expansive pool area with a party atmosphere. Luxor may be near the bottom of this list, but it is miles ahead of Excalibur. In our opinion, it comes in at number 8. Checking in at number 7 is New York, New York Hotel and Casino. Once again, New York, New York checks in down toward the bottom of the list and it almost seems unfair. It really has more to do with the quality of the rest of the resorts in the portfolio than it does the quality of this particular hotel. We've always really enjoyed New York, New York. The atmosphere is lively, the casino is great to play in, and the hotel is a little bit smaller than the others in the MGM portfolio, so it's easy to find your way around. The Village Eateries feature some of the best cheap eats you're going to find in an MGM resort, and it's just a cool place to hang out. 
The hotel features a great arcade upstairs as well as the Big Apple Coaster, which famously runs right along Las Vegas Boulevard. The pool scene here is not great. It's one of the smaller pools on the strip and it's tucked away at the back of the property where it doesn't get a lot of sunshine. So if the pool is one of your primary concerns, this is probably not the property for you. One thing that has held this hotel back in recent years has been its dated guest rooms, but that's currently changing as the hotel is in the midst of a full room remodel. In all, this is a great mid-range hotel if you're looking for a fun environment, affordable food options, and a good location. That's why it checks in at number 7. Next up at number 6 is the MGM Grand. All right, the MGM Grand is MGM Resort's flagship property in Las Vegas. It's the biggest and it's the oldest, opening in 1993. The first thing people are going to say about the MGM Grand is that it is massive, and they would be right. It is one of the largest properties in Las Vegas, if not the world. But don't let its size intimidate you. Yes, you might get lost at first, but once you've stayed at this property for a few nights, it's not that hard to navigate, and the size is one of its biggest assets. It has a ton of dining options, from fine dining all the way down to a food court. In our opinion, it might just have the best pool on the strip. We love hanging out at the MGM Grand Pool. It has a lazy river. It has multiple other pools. It also has Wet Republic, which is one of the hottest day clubs in town. And if you rent a cabana or a day bed at the MGM Grand Pool, you get half of your rental fee back in a food and beverage minimum, which isn't very common anymore in Las Vegas. To top it all off, the MGM Grand is located right on the Las Vegas monorail route, so if you don't have a car and you want to save yourself a few steps, you can get easily up and down the east side of the strip pretty cheaply using the monorail. The MGM Grand is not a luxury property, but it's not a budget option either. It can be just about anything you want it to be, and that's why it checks in near the middle of our list at number 6. Checking in at number 5 is Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino. We're also going to throw Delano in with that. Mandalay Bay is almost forgotten about on the south end of the Strip just because it's so isolated. A lot of people just won't stay at Mandalay Bay because they feel like it's too far down the Strip, and that used to be us. But then we stayed there and we realized this is actually a great property. The hotel features some of the best standard guest rooms in the MGM portfolio, and the hotel really is a fully contained resort. It has a ton of dining options, great entertainment, a very nice casino, and it's connected to its neighbors Luxor and Excalibur both indoors by walking or by taking the free tram. Delano is technically a separate luxury property on site, but the two essentially share the casino, and that's why we've decided to lump them together on this list. Delano's rooms are all suites and offer some of the nicer accommodations MGM resorts have to offer up and down the strip. This property overall is absolutely phenomenal. We think this property is great from top to bottom and we've always said if it were in the middle of the strip it would be one of the premier hotels in all of Las Vegas. No discussion of Mandalay Bay would be complete without talking about the pool. The pool at Mandalay Bay rivals the MGM Grand as, in our minds, the two best resort pools on the Strip. It has a lazy river, a wave pool, multiple other pools, as well as a topless optional adults only pool. Now while we think this hotel is good enough to stand on its own, the location does definitely hold it back a little bit. That's why it checks in at number 5 on our list. Checking in this time at number four, Aria Resort and Casino and Vidara. Now if you watched our last video ranking the MGM Resorts, you'd know that Aria was number one on that list. For years, Aria was our favorite property in Las Vegas and we stayed there quite a few times. But it was our last stay in one of Aria's standard rooms that opened our eyes to the fact that this property opened in 2009 and is overdue for a remodel. We made a video about that stay and it got quite a bit of traction online. If somehow you haven't seen it, the link is in the description below. Aria's standard rooms are dreadfully overdue for a remodel, especially for a property that bills itself as a higher end hotel. Aria still has a beautiful casino floor and a phenomenal lineup of restaurants. 
an above average pool area, and a pretty good location center strip. But it does tend to cater to the high rollers, which is why the Sky Suites and Sky Villas have recently been remodeled, but the standard rooms remain more than a little worse for the wear. If and when the standard rooms at Aria are remodeled, this property will easily vault back up the list, but for now, it checks in at number four. Coming in at number three, and one that has some sentimental value to us, is Park MGM. Putting Park MGM at number three on our list was bound to be controversial, but let us explain. Park MGM, when it was the Monte Carlo, was the first hotel that we ever stayed at together in Las Vegas, so it definitely holds a sentimental value. But aside from that, we find Park MGM to have a lot of features that you can't find elsewhere, such as the only completely smoke-free property on the Las Vegas Strip, a great location right next to the park and T-Mobile Arena, the Italian marketplace Italy on the front of the building, great dining options throughout, and a nice, chill, laid-back environment throughout the property, as well as a pretty underrated pool. No, Park MGM's pool is not the place to go to party, but if you're looking for a nice, calm, relaxing environment that's definitely upscale, this pool fits the bill. The standard guest rooms at Park MGM definitely aren't luxurious, and a lot of people, to be honest, hate them. We don't love them or hate them, but we do find it to be one of the best values in the MGM portfolio. And if you're looking for luxury, you don't have to leave the building. You can also stay at Nomad, which occupies the top few floors. Nomad has its own separate entrance, its own separate pool, its own separate casino, which is technically more of a high-limit room and overall just a decidedly more luxurious feel than the rest of the resort. Park MGM might not be for everyone, but it's definitely for us, and that's why it checks in at number three on our list. Coming in this time at number two is the famous Bellagio. What can you say about the Bellagio that hasn't been said before? The Bellagio is easily one of the most recognizable hotels in the world, and a lot of people were probably surprised to find that it didn't check in at number one in our last list, and it still doesn't this time, but for another reason. Regardless, the Bellagio is an absolutely beautiful property, from the famous fountains of Bellagio to the world-renowned conservatory. One place it had been lacking in recent years is in the standard guest rooms. When we stayed there in 2019, we found our room to be worn out and a bit outdated. Those rooms have since been remodeled, and in January of 2022, we stayed in a remodeled Fountain View King. That room was absolutely gorgeous and we loved it. The restaurant lineup is outstanding, although it tends to skew. Okay, let's face it, it doesn't skew expensive, it is expensive. This is one of the higher end dining destinations on the strip, and you're gonna find it difficult, if not impossible, to find anything cheap. Long story short, the Bellagio remains one of the premier luxury properties in Las Vegas, and you'll pay for it. It checks in at number two on our list. And the number one spot on our list, and you've probably figured it out, is the new kid on the block to the MGM portfolio, Cosmopolitan. The Cosmopolitan is one of the hottest and most popular resorts on the Las Vegas Strip, and when MGM Resorts added this to its portfolio, it went immediately to the top of our list. Perhaps most famous for its huge inventory of balcony rooms, some of which overlook the Bellagio Fountains, the Cosmopolitan is the hip place to be on the Las Vegas Strip in 2023. It has an upscale and new money vibe, a phenomenal restaurant lineup, a great collection of lounges and bars, a good sports book, entertainment on site with Opium by Spiegel World, and who could forget the world famous Chandelier Bar. The rooms at the Cosmopolitan are well above average, and if you get a room with a terrace, it's a bonus that you hardly find elsewhere on the strip. In our minds, the Cosmopolitan is what Aria used to be before it kind of fell behind. A lot of people are worried that MGM Resorts is going to change the Cosmopolitan for the worse. But for now, the Cosmopolitan remains one of the best properties on the Strip, and to us, it's by far the best property in the MGM portfolio. So that's our list of MGM Resorts in 2023 from worst 
all the way to first. Again, this is just our opinion. Don't shoot the messenger. If you disagree, that's fine. We can all just get along, right? We can agree to disagree. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, what should they do? They should subscribe. And turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Hey, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. We'll see you in the next one, because there's always more for us to show you on Show Me Vegas. Bye, guys.